Hey guys, welcome back to our first episode of 2021 for Interstage Window. Oh my gosh, we made it to 2021. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> this far. Hey Naomi, hey. Hey Ty. Oh my gosh. Um, I said this already on Thursday, but I'm going to say it again for the Interstage Window crowd. I missed you guys so much like i can't even express um once you get used to streaming it's just like it just feels very weird not to very weird <laughs> so i yeah, missed you guys no, i who else is going to listen to me talk for hours on end on saturday afternoons i was like going <laughs> crazy because i was like i have these opinions and no one is here to listen to them <laughs> i would just have to listen by myself <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, we've got um, we've got a really cool opening show planned for you guys that I think is going to be really fun. We've got some really stuff, fun stuff planned for this month. And um, yeah, Happy New Year. Oh my gosh, we made it. We made it through 2020. And now we're gonna now we have to make it through 2021. I know, but uh, but wow. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a wild seven, eight, nine days of 2021, hasn't it? I know, right? It was like, yay, by 2020 and 2021 goes, hold my beer. <laughs> Hopefully it's all bravado and as we settle into January and, you know, certain dates pass and certain <laughs> regimes and um, then we can sit there and be like, ah, oh, it was just bravado and 2021 is going to be the wonderful, gentle hug that we, we all need. Well, we know a vaccine is coming. I know it's probably going to be a while before we have it, but um, that is some good news we can look forward to coming towards, uh, I'm, I'm thinking probably fall at the soonest, but we'll see. You know, as far as like people like me that um, are not, uh, you know, essential workers or at risk or anything like that. Hey, Thumper, so glad for you to, to have you here today. Um, that's the other thing, me being out of practice. I realized listening back to Thursday's VOD, I am so out of practice at talking to you guys. So <laughs> sorry for all the stumbles, like I'm a brand new streamer or something. <laughs> it's fine. That's what happens when you take a month break. Apparently, apparently. <laughs> yes. Okay. So yeah, so what are no, we going to talk 20... about today? <laughs> like this. Oh, oh, if you want to just go talk more 2021, go ahead. But yeah. Um, no, it's fine. I was just going to say 2021, I agree, Ty, has been busier than most of last year. Uh, <laughs> I agree with that. We're only nine days in. But guess what? It'll be fine because at this point we get to we get to figure out and settle into a new normal. And I'm excited to do that because I'm tired of this normal. <clears throat> same. Big same. Oh, yeah. Um... <laughs> Uh, also, real quick, this is going to make sense a little bit more when I, when I talk about uh, my favorite thing. But if you guys want, I've already set everything up for the, the, the animal cam. So if you guys want to see the baby, do the thing down in the spell reagents. I've already got it set up. I just got to press the button to turn it on. So y'all tell me if you want that. Okay, so with that, well, yeah, Landon, what are we talking about today? So this week, we are going to deep dive into both the personal, but also the psychological reasons that we RP. Yeah. Uh, what drew us to this hobby, why we stayed, what we still get from it, even 10 plus years later. What is it that, that we, why we invest so much time and energy into this and why we love it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Jane, thank you so much for joining us. So happy to have you. Um, yeah, Yay. it's going to be it's going to be really fun. We thought this would be like a really good thing to talk about for the um, the opening of, you know, of 2021. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think we had one other thing, one other thing that I wanted to say in particular before we really get too started into the topic. Um, so I found out some information after Thursday's stream there is actually a GoFundMe for Winnie, and it's to help out her now widower, I guess you would call him, with their um, with their son who has special needs. So if somebody could please type into the chat, exclamation Winnie for me. There we go. Thank you so much, Landon. Um, so today, if you're thinking about becoming a subscriber or any of that stuff, um, please hold off. Instead, take that money and uh, give it to Winnie's husband because he needs it way more than I'm ever going to. Yes, and that was it's a good way to show some support. They obviously have a wonderful community around them because they've been been able to donate and raise a, a decent amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanna we wanna show our support to her um, tenfold than what she showed to us in, yeah. in her support for the stream and in this hobby. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So first, before we get into this topic, Karen. Yes. 
your favorite thing of this week slash oh my the gosh, holiday month. season? <laughs> month? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. So, <laughs> so I want to say for my favorite thing, a big thank you to um, the veterinary workers that I that I worked with today, the, the vet and the techs. Um, my dog had to go in for her annual appointment this morning and she is an old lady. She's like 15, 16 years old. And um, very thankfully, she is given a clean bill of health. She's doing really good. She does have pretty major hip dysplasia, however. So what that means for her is that she can't really walk so good anymore. Um, but we've gonna, we're gonna get her on some really good pain medication to manage that for her. And um, just hearing otherwise that she was healthy this morning was um, definitely the highlight favorite thing <laughs> that I have to say today. So if y'all want to see her use your spell reagents, um, cash that in and uh, I'll turn on the puppy cam. It's on her right now. I just got to go actually turn it on. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much, Naomi. I was really happy to hear that too. So that's my favorite thing. Um, but uh, Landon, what was, uh, what's your favorite thing in the past, oh my All gosh, right. freaking month? <laughs> well, I'm doing two favorite things because I'm selfish Ooh. and villainous like that. Um, the first is we've opened this wonderful new RP, um, <laughs> and it has been fantastic. Yeah, I'm self promoting. I'm self promoting an RP that we've opened. Um, I almost did that. I'm not gonna lie. I almost did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm glad I did it. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's a fantastic RP. Uh, we've been we've been officially opened for a week now, which means everyone's getting their second characters today. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just so I so obviously we took what a two two months a month and a half to really build this RP from like when we closed uh, Atlantis. Yes. But I'm gonna be also honest. Since the beginning of the semester, I have kind of fallen off of the RP train as far as being able to do it, mm -hmm. um, losing inspiration, but also like getting busy, all of this fun stuff. So it has been great to be back at it with the community that I love with a new story that's always so regenerizing um, and just being able to write. I'm so excited and it is definitely my favorite thing of the week. Uh, yes. And having prepared all of the stuff that we have been doing and writing and creating in the world building and character development and all of this, all the stuff that really just gets the writer in me going, um, being able to do that for the last couple of months has been amazing. Yeah, I also love how energizing a new story is. So it's been, it's been wonderful. Um, you know, to kind of have that back, because uh, it is—it just it gets the create it gets the creativity flowing like nothing else does. Having a new story to do, yeah, and it's it's, it's like a nice little refresh, and it's like oh, okay, no, we we let that all go, and here we are now with new ideas, and we are new people. It's kind of like a new year, but a new story. <laughs> yeah, like um, new year, new me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ty says, I aspire uh, yeah. to be as relaxed as that dog. Yeah, <laughs> she's sleeping good. She got um, she got her new fancy uh, pain pill this morning. So she is feeling good or should be. I hope I hope this the sleeping means she's feeling really good. <laughs> Stoned out of her mind that dog is right I now. hope so. <laughs> Cloud nine. Um, yes. And so the other thing that I want to shout out to is I have picked up the a, book, a new book series for the first time in what feels like years, but it's probably only been a few months. Oh. And it's the uh, the Children of Blood and Bone. Oh. And it, I am literally 50 pages in, and it is fucking amazing. Really? Um, yeah, it's a great YA series, but it uh, all of all of the characters are people of color. Um, there's a hint that there's going to be an enemies to lovers. It might have a little bit of queer oh. undertone. Um, I'm very, very excited to see where this goes. Also, it involves magic and awesome cultures and great world building. So I'm here for it. I mean, those are all of my favorite things. So, <laughs> so I'm like I said, I'm only like 50 pages in, but I've heard amazing reviews and all of my friends love it. So I'm like, I'm sold and I'm here for it. And so I'm saying shout it out to go read it so that I can talk to other people about it too. Okay. <laughs> well, as we know, I'm a, I'm a pretty slow reader, but, um, but I'll see, uh, my husband and, and parents are much bigger readers. So I'm going to go look at their Kindle accounts and see if they already have it. And if they do, um, I'll check it out because <laughs> they probably already do. <laughs> All right. 
shall we dive into this topic? Yes, let's dive in. Let's dive in. Um, how do we want to get started? I want you to tell me why you started RPing. Okay. <laughs> like, let's just, just dive in. Okay. Like, like, you know, we don't need any slow transitions. Just why did you do it? Okay, so um, the way that role-playing feels to me is it's an extension of what I used to do as a kid, right? And what I mean by that is that, you know, I used to play pretend, I used to play with Barbies, and then I, it was, I was around like 11 years old or so, maybe something like that. And then I stumbled upon people role-playing online in Yahoo chat rooms, I'm pretty sure was the very first time I saw it. Um, and then I found like muds and, and mucks and things like that. You know, y'all old people know what I'm talking about. But um, <laughs> that was like the first time that I saw it. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's people playing pretend on the internet. I can still do this, you know, and the internet was something that was, you know, it was, it was something I could do that I didn't have to tell anybody what, that, what I was doing exactly, you know, so they didn't have to judge me for being 11 years old and still wanting to play with Barbie dolls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so that is how it started. But that's not really why it continues today. So mm -hmm. to explain a little bit more of that, the reason why I continue to role play, I think is very similar to a lot of people in the sense of it's important to me to have a space where I'm not being myself. <laughs> and I know it sounds a little strange, but growing up, um, the best way I know to describe this, because I didn't really have a lot of uh, trauma or any kind of craziness associated with my family, uh, it, like that anyway. But, um, but what I did have is I did have a lot of struggles with when I would make friends in school, keeping those friends and being healthy in that regard. So this is the best way I know to describe it. Y'all, have, have you seen the movie Mean Girls? Um, I'm sorry. Are you suggesting that there is a person who has lived in this world that hasn't <laughs> seen the movie Mean Girls? Because yeah. I personally, at least here in at least here in the Western world, I personally think that, that is actually physically and emotionally impossible. So I'm sure that somebody like this exists. I haven't met them, but you know. So Mean Girls, that's basically like my life. That's like a documentary about my life. Every friend group I was ever a part of was like that. Which one were you? Oh God, it's not really, that's not really what I mean, right? Like what I mean, no, I know. <laughs> what I mean is like every friend group I ever had, well, almost every friend group I ever had was a bunch of backstabbing, conniving bitches. Like it's just true. <laughs> um, and that's no shade. You know, we were all in like, you know, middle school, high school and people are, I don't know what y'all's middle school and high school experience was like, but um, people are awful. I don't blame any of them. You know, I don't blame any of them because we're young and stupid. But that was basically my experience. So I'll give an, I'll give like an example that it's just, this happened to a lot of girls. So this isn't like a unique story. So I won't go into too much detail, but to like, for example, when I got my first boyfriend that was really serious and I ended up losing my virginity, um, I did that before this one particular other person in the friend group and they were so incredibly offended that they and they were offended anytime I got male attention, right? But they were so incredibly offended that that happened that they basically came after me and um, ousted me from the friend group. Now, I made it easy for them because as soon as I saw it's happening, I was like, well, I don't need y'all. Bye. Like, I'm not going to be hated on for that. <laughs> so, you know, it's not like I, I didn't make it hard on them. But, like, <laughs> stuff like that, stuff like that is throughout my middle school and high school journey. So, with those well, and, experiences, I, I needed an escape place that was, you know, that was not that. <laughs> yeah. And Wow, Landon, and that, I see your text message. Wow. <laughs> and without getting too deep into it, also, like, I think a lot of, of uh, people who are assigned uh, women at birth, yeah. Um, and grow up socialized to be women are socialized to have these sort of relationships. Like we, we were like, you're taught that there is a hierarchy mm -hmm. within women and women relationships. 
yep. and that there is a social order that must be followed. And if at, at any point in time you're trying to crawl your way up, which is why Mean Girls is such a fantastic fucking movie because it like is a social commentary on that. Yeah, it's like a dramatized but, version of some of something that so many of us have experienced. Yes, and then you can, like it's, it's such a good thing. Um, <laughs> but I think that that a lot of people have that experience because that's how we've been taught to do it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I had those types of experiences over and freaking over. But you know, it yeah. was always there for me is to join a role play group and pretend to be somebody else for a while. And that got me through it in in ways that like, I, I mean, I can't express like if I had not found a hobby like that. I don't know. Like, I don't know what I would be like now. Um, a very, very different person. That's the best I can say for that. <laughs> You wouldn't have had those coping mechanisms of escapism. No, I would not have. And um, and I and I know that when it comes to like facing trauma and uh, and and things of that nature, you know, it's it's not any one thing. Like for a lot of people, you know, they, they blame their parents or whatever for the trauma, right? But then there's situations where you can have siblings and one sibling turns out fine and the other one doesn't. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think about that. I think about like. I really do think in a lot of ways role play is why I kind of turned out fine. <laughs> I I hear you and see you for that. <laughs> yes. Um my my story is I role play role play is also why I've turned out somewhat functional. <laughs> yeah, tell us tell us your version. <clears throat> um well, I think so <sighs> Like you, I, I very much had a very active imagination. And you talked about like playing dolls at 11 years old. But for me, what we were doing is we were, I I was a drama kid. I don't know who was surprised by that. I mean, I was but too. I, I hear you. <laughs> before there was even drama classes or whatever, I was like being raised and primed to be a drama kid. And I had found the other people who were being raised and primed to be a drama kid. Like one of these friends of mine in elementary school is literally a girl who is a working actress wow. in LA right now. So like, <laughs> so we would- Is that we, who I'm thinking of? Is it the person I'm thinking no, of? No, actually uh, someone else. But that okay. just goes to show that I have a type. Yeah, because um, <laughs> I was like, oh, did she start Did she start working? Because last I was connected with this person that, that I'm asking about, she wasn't quite yet, but she was trying to. So I was about to say congratulations, but sorry. <laughs> I, I agree about that, but it won't be on stream tea. Okay. Um, <laughs> Y'all will have to become a Patreon to hear that tea. Just okay. Um, anyway. <laughs> No, so we would act out these scenarios. And mm. we were basically doing like D and D slash role playing stories before we even knew or he had even a clue to conceptualize that that's what we were doing. So are like, you telling me that you were LARPing? <laughs> we were LARPing. We were LARPing we were LARPing Sailor Moon characters or our or um off brand Harry Potter characters or oh, anything yeah. like that. Like we literally we're LARPing. And that's how we would spend our recess our recess and our hanging out together. And this there was a whole group of people who would do that. So um this and as you get older, obviously kids start realizing that that's not really cool. <laughs> so, but I never realized that. Um I just transformed where I was putting that creative imaginary energy. And for me it was I started writing. Mm -hmm. Um but then, like, there's a loneliness to writing. I didn't have this social communication or connections. Um, mm. So then when I discovered RPing, um, I once again found myself in with a group of people, including the person that you were thinking of, who were very dramatized and very drama kids. Um, and we, they introduced me to RPing. Oh. And I think what really got me connected and why I stayed and why I loved it so much has to do for the fact that I was completely and utterly in love with someone who was a woman and I was not allowed to be out. Mm. And my character could be a boy who was in love with her character. And I could express queer feelings without actually expressing queer feelings. Oh. Um, and that's, that's how I learned or started this habit of being able to express things within writing that I wasn't able to express in my real life. Um, and, and the way I RP continued to do that. Now the subjects, 
in which I was RPing and expressing and the emotions while at the base were similar, but the scenarios were obviously different as I started writing less self inserts. Um, but a huge part of what I and why I RP now is because I have all of these intense feelings inside of me that I'm just like, we Sorry about that. I have no idea if the problem is me or Twitch. So um, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on how everything is looking. If it's Twitch, I don't I don't think there's anything I can do about it. I mean, if it's me, I don't think there's anything I can do about it is the truth. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're going to do our best. But I just rebooted my router and my my modem. And, um, and we're going to go with that. So hopefully everything is fixed now. For those of you guys still in the chat, how does it look? Does it look laggy my my stats don't say it's lagging but who knows no your video your video is good and clear for me so okay okay and yes that's, i'm back that's i'm so sorry <laughs> hey and okay during how slow my internet is oh so. my gosh <laughs> okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna just hit record so that it's recording from my computer as well so that hopefully we can save the vod if stuff gets jacked up again all right so i'm gonna go ahead and launch the game once again and um and where we were at, where we were at was um, Landon was letting us know that basically she role played because it was a chance for her to be gay. <laughs> <laughs> the closet is a secret queer. Yes. <laughs> and, and also childhood trauma made me do it. <laughs> childhood um, trauma made me do it. <laughs> but like that, that's what you were kind of saying too, yeah. right? It was, a different, it was obviously a different kind of um, childhood trauma, but it was this idea of going somewhere safe where you didn't have to live the reality in which the world was making you live. Yeah, it pretty like much. Um, and Thumper says that roleplay was also where they did their queerness. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's where, that's where I have a feeling that's where a lot of people did their queerness. Yes, for sure. <laughs> now, I want to save a little bit of, um, of some of my experience for next episode because we are going to talk about gender. Um, so I want to share some of that stuff with you guys, but it's really not related to why I role play or anything like that. Um, so we're going to save that, that conversation, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think in, in some ways that even tracks for me, somebody who is, you know, cishet and all of that stuff. Right. Yeah. And it's, I mean, role playing gives you the opportunity to be something you are not. And it yeah. is an incredibly unique opportunity. You get to try it out. You, yeah, you're gonna try it out, but you also like if if you think of all the other things and all the other hobbies that you let you be someone someone else. Mm -hmm. What that someone else like being that someone else also lacks control. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're an actor who enjoys getting into the insight into the head of another character, you don't control the words or the world or the plot or anything like that. If you enjoy writing a book, I mean, it's very similar to RPing, but uh, it's very solo. So you're not really acting things out. You're you're being everybody. You're being mm -hmm. multiple characters. Um, if you really, truly dig into hobbies, ro role playing and LARPing are, are unique in that in that way that you get to, like, be your different self completely and utterly. Mm hmm. Um, Ty says, so I, I, I find face-to-face -face socializing hard work. Roleplay lets me have a kind of vicarious socializing and gives structured conversation about writing characters, etc. Most people who write are generally more thoughtful and steadier in nature. You know, I kind yeah. of agree with that. Um, I definitely get exhausted by face-to-face -face socializing. I, I love socializing like this, right? Because it's kind of like me on a stage, you know? It's a little bit, it's different. It's a different kind of socializing. You know, I love presenting stuff. I love being on stage. I love that type of of social connections, but like face-to-face, -face, like one-on-one -on -one serious conversation, um, that's a little bit more of a struggle with me until I really get to know somebody, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Also, I think it's important to bring up that um, while we are able to play another character when RPing, because most of our us RP'd online, we also got to be a different person while online, mm -hmm. which I know we've talked about a lot, especially when we talked about like online friendships, but being able to have that, you know, anonymous persona mm -hmm. is really relieving to somebody who feels like they're lost in their own skin. Yeah. Or feels like that they're not happy with the friendships or the person that they are and how they're being judged. Like being able to have that freedom to not only play different lines and different characters, but to literally be a different person while still being yourself. Yep. 
yep. is awesome. And yeah. so being able to make those connections also, I think, needs to be a part of that discussion. Yes, I 100% agree. It sounds like Mochi, Mochi's feeling the same vibe as well. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like the current state of the world has kind of made us all into uh, weird internet people somewhat. <laughs> but, um, you know, those of us that are role players, I think we've probably all uh, been a little bit weird internet people all along. <laughs> and, I, and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to probably argue that I think it's probably a generational thing, too. I a think little bit. generation is weird internet people. Mm -hmm. And the people who are saying that they're not weird internet, internet people are lying <laughs> or, or, or one of the two <laughs> something because i don't know how you missed it you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. um and it just it it's nice it's relieving it's freeing it's just fun yeah <laughs> yeah it for also sure. is so much more complicated and we have a stream on that so if you want to listen to us rant about like relationships that you make online you can um yep. but it is part of it Yes, we did do that stream as well, um, talking about some of the, the ways it is it is different than real life. And I, I don't think it replaces real life relationships, but we talked about that in that stream. <clears throat> yep. Oh, hi, I like what you're saying is that um, everyone's social bu bubble is the same size as mine and masks give me an excuse for why I don't know what your face is doing. <laughs> That's fair. Oh, I love that. That's it's true. true. <laughs> Um, all right, so that's kind of how we we got started, but let's let's break down some of these like reasonings and give them names. I think that that would be a good place to start. Okay, yeah, um, for the sure. First one that we kind of beat around the bush with, but it's it's all in the same as far as like being able to sink into another character, being able to like not be yourself, all and being able to like even play with dolls or, or role play or LARP or whatever, all of this is an example of disassociation. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a big word. A lot of people hear that word and they go, that seems not healthy, um, but it is perfectly healthy. Everyone dissociates in some level. It's just the level of which you're dissociating and then also how you're dissociating and why. Yeah, yeah I think we hear a lot about dissociation in the, in the times that it is not healthy like in the times where people are doing it and they're doing it in a very maladaptive way. But but that's not what we're talking about. I mean, we'll touch on that a little bit, but like you, everyone disassociates. Like a, a good example that I like to call out to kind of make this sink in and make people realize what we're talking about is like when little kids have imaginary friends. No one yeah. tells a little kid they're not allowed to have an imaginary friend. That is a perfectly 100% normal thing that all kids at some point do. And if they didn't do it, they know somebody that did it. You know what I mean? It is very, very normal. But that is a form of disassociation because that imaginary friend isn't really there, you know? And on some level, uh, the kid probably knows that, right? They know that, that it's imaginary and most kids end up growing out of it and they stop talking about their imaginary friend, right? That's totally normal, even though it is disassociative. Yeah, and I think what when we talk about like disassociative, is that there's there's maladaptive disassociation and then um, adaptive disassociation. Is that the other one? Yeah. yeah. So there's there's mal there's adaptive <laughs> disassociation and then there's maladaptive disassociation. So maladaptive mal the bad one, and then adaptive is when it's useful for you. Yeah, Welcome back, Jane. I'm so sorry we had to pause the stream. I guess it was partly my internet because rebooting my router seems to have fixed it. <laughs> An adaptive dissociation is things like having imaginary friends, mm -hmm. daydreaming, mm -hmm. even um, being able to to plan through like what if scenarios. All of this is examples of adaptive dissociation that everybody does on some level. Mm hmm. Um, and like Karen said, if even if you didn't have an imaginary friend as a kid, you did have an imagination. And mm -hmm. using that imagination and being able to create structures or worlds or facts that don't exist are, are an example of disassociation. Yep, absolutely. Jane says uh, she had a snow leopard, a pet snow leopard as her imaginary friend. That cracks me That's up, Jane. So I don't remember my yeah. imaginary friend as a child, but my parents tell me his name was X and he was a duck. I don't know what that means, but that was that's apparently what I did. <laughs> so interestingly enough, I did not have an imaginary friend. Mm. Um, I just instead LARPed. <laughs> 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 um, I played out unreal scenarios. So I was like the only thing real in an imaginary world instead of having an imaginary thing in a real world. So oh. this is fun. Okay. 
<laughs> That's funny. Fun it fact is. about Landon. Um, I'm so glad, <laughs> Jane, that I'm not alone. <laughs> Um, but I also, uh, the other, the other one that is commonly, um, talked about is daydreaming. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I know that there's maladaptive daydreaming. Well, yeah, you can do it too much. (laughs) Really sucked in, um, that you're like, lose all track of whatever is going on in the real world. I do not do that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I am more of the scenario, what if sort of daydreaming which I want to talk about like the effects that that can have on the brain, but we can talk about that in a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, um, but I think everybody does that, right? Everybody daydreams to some extent yeah. to the point that um, if somebody says they don't daydream, that's probably going to be the thing that's like, really, you don't, that's really surprising. You know what I mean? Um, so, so yeah, but that's disassociation for sure. Yeah. And then disassociation comes around because it's, um, it, it, it gives you that stress relief. So that's mm-hmm. why the brain does it. Is it, it allows you to both have an imagination and that's why kids do it. But also um, it is a trigger to trauma mm-hmm. um, and also a trigger to stress. Yep. So being able to like separate outside of your reality to, to understand the better understanding of what is going on is what the inherent process is inside of your brain. Um, how we as humans use it differs per person um and that that is what that's where disassociation like disorders start Mm -hmm. being defined is because a lot of those are trauma responses Mm -hmm. um and and disassociation during trauma is is extremely um common like most people disassociate during some sort of trauma yep like they say fight or flight but that's really not true a lot of people's um response to a very incredibly stressful situation is to freeze right and that's essentially what's happening is they're they're disassociating yep freeze um amnesia setting in is a form of disassociation as well so if someone doesn't remember a particular traumatic event um that's a form of dissociation yep there are a lot of different forms of dissociation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and it's actually a fantastically unique uh, thing that the brain does. And if anyone ever wants to like learn about it, and especially anyone with like, like if they want to learn about dissociation disorders, there are some fantastic YouTubers who, uh, who are, whose prime focus is to educate people. Um, Associated is one of the biggest ones for me. Um, but yep, it's I've actually, seen a bunch of her videos too. Yeah. And she's very, and she, she's very open about like having, um, dissociative disorders and everything like that. So it's, it's really, it's really cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And there's a uh, whole bunch Thumper. of them that will teach you all about it. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, Thumper, I used to pray to God to make me a sailor scout and leave me <laughs> and leave <laughs> this world and go hang out with Sailor Moon. Listen, Thumper, <gasps> that's what I was LARPing. I was LARPing Sailor Moon. I was actually Sailor Earth, who's like the, the sailor scout. Wait, you I made a Sailor Earth? Fuck yeah, I made a Sailor Earth. Oh my I god. The best sister. It was awesome. She was <laughs> also gay, but I didn't know that in the context of my small child brain in that moment. That's fine. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I love that for you. <laughs> I love it for me, too. Sorry, I just got really excited because Slumber was talking about Sailor Moon, and I was just like, yeah, childhood. <laughs> so it's so funny to me because um, I was, I, I never I never realized you could, like, an OC inside of a fandom when I was a kid. Like, the, I knew people did that, but it was, like, really cheesy to me. So, like, I would, I would play the canon characters, right? So for Sailor Moon, I always had to be Sailor Venus, right? <laughs> 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 that's what I had I, to do. For you, though, to be honest, though, because you are the Sailor Venus, and that makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I just loved her. I thought she was like the coolest freaking thing, and she's the one that you learn about last. And she has this like amazing backstory about how she was a Sailor Scout beforehand, and I, know, I just thought she was like the coolest thing in the freaking world. She is the coolest thing. She also had an awesome cat. She so. did. <laughs> Artemis, so cool. <laughs> Oh, that's a great back bumper. Sailor Moon was created because the author wanted friends to like them. And that hit Aww. every girl <laughs> that didn't have a lot of friends right in the heart. It's true. true. I had a big ass, sorry, Mochi. I had a big ass gay crush on Sailor Uranus. It's Who did fine. not? I mean, even even in the <laughs> show, the they all did. It, like, with any of the outer planet sailors, actually. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> even in the show, all the girls had the crush on Sailor Uranus. Um, it was amazing. <laughs> 
Um, yes. So, anyway, back from <laughs> talking about Taylor Swift. Uh, disassociation. What I also wanted to talk about, though, is like why it is important to separate yourself from your character, especially if you're using this as like a coping me- mechanism of disassociation. Mm, yeah. And that is because no matter how hard you try, you are still you and you are still in your body. <laughs> um, Damn it. <laughs> I know that this is amazing, this is amazing facts that we're learning. But what happens when you put yourself through scenarios that you put yourself through when RPing or daydreaming or anything like that is that your body is still reacting mm-hmm. to those things that are happening. You just don't have the mental or the or the visual stimulus to like process it along with it. Mm-hmm. So um, if you're not completely aware and not completely like, if you're still kind of ingrained in this like, not sure where the line is blurred that you want to be this person in persona that you're making um that the self like we're talking self insert inserts but like plus steps Mm -hmm. um (laughs) yep (laughs) it it can be very very hard on your mental health and on your body because you'll do things like put your character through a scenario feel too close to that character And also have your body going through the emotional trauma that that character is possibly going through. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's take an example of if you're really close to a character and that character goes through a breakup because the significant other cheats on them. um, And you know, even though it is fiction, that this is not actually happening, your body (laughs) does not know that. Um, Your body can't separate that. Uh, If you are so entwined with your character that it's like, oh, no, actually, it thinks that you're going through this sudden heartbreak. Yeah, our bodies and brains are kind of amazing in that way, right? Because one part of your brain knows that it's obviously not real, right? And it's fiction and it's it's fake and it's, it's fine. But there are other parts of your body and your brain that don't know that, right? And they don't always, like, connect in in the way that you would think they would. Sometimes those two thoughts end up connecting in surprising ways and you have reactions you did not expect to have. (laughs) That's happened on an occasion. Yes. (laughs) And you're like, oh shoot, why am I like this upset? Oh my God, why do I actually feel mad at this person? This is silly. But you, sometimes it happens and you can't help it. And it's like a, a complete accident that it happened that way. It wasn't, it wasn't your intention, but that's what your body did and that's what your brain did. <laughs> yeah. And it just, it's, and we're not saying this because that means that like RP is a bad way of using our, our the dissociation tactic. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to point it out because it can be very taxing, especially if you continuously uh, write RPs that are emotionally hard yeah. or um, that require a lot of energy. Um, if you continuously do that without a break, you, it can take a toll on your body. People won't think that writing will take a toll on your body, but it will. Thumper, um, you're cracking me up. <laughs> she says, I'm um, sorry, they said, uh, if I'm writing a sad thread and not personally crying, I'm not writing it sad enough. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, big same, right? But that means that sometimes I have to not do a sad thread for a minute. <laughs> My goal is to get both me and my partner crying <laughs> at all times. Right? <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, last night I was crying. I was writing up a, a bio and I was like, oh, this person's like real sad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that bio is really sad. We're going to, it's yeah. going to get posted soon. Y'all will see it soon. <clears throat> but um, no, having that like that, like, oh, am I, am I actually doing enough if I'm not feeling the emotions? Um which can be great if you are have emotions that you can't express or don't want to express in a different way. Having an outlet for those emotions are great. But if you're creating the scenarios and become, and uh, my friends use this word and I hate it because it's a call out and you're becoming an emotional masochist Aww. because you, uh, in, because you are trying to process through that way. Just be careful with that. It can be, it can be a form of not, processing correctly yeah it can become maladaptive put it that way something that helps you can become maladaptive if you do it you know too much or kind of in the wrong way and people who are getting there or have been there or we just want to i just wanted to put that out as a 
PSA of, hey, there are some, these are great coping mechanisms, but there are some downsides and there is such a thing as too far. Yeah, there is, unfortunately. Um, which, yeah, which is when sometimes you just need to step back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's the difference, right? And the only person that can tell you whether what you're doing is adaptive or maladaptive is you and if you cannot then you would need to seek the help of a professional right um because there's a different line for everybody there's a different line for everybody and, and you don't know where somebody else's line is yeah and that's and and that's like the difficult thing about having um friendships and relationships online is that it's so much harder to tell where that line is yeah yeah in the uh, other person yeah because it's like, oh, I don't actually know how this is affecting you. You can tell me that you're crying or you can tell me that you're fine, but I can't see you not doing those things. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's yeah. different. It is different. All right. Um, but that kind of like goes hand in hand and, and this and coming from like this association aspect, uh, let's start talking about how how it can really help our mental health. Yes, for sure. So when it comes to, I feel like when it comes to things that are very traumatic and upsetting, um, it's not always obvious how to deal with something until you've kind of had a conversation about it, right? And for really, for things that are that are really complicated, sometimes putting a character through that is a great way to kind of have that conversation um in a safe space that isn't going to upset the other person because sometimes sometimes i feel like going to the other person being like this is troubling me i don't know why it's troubling me you know da da da, da. like that's not always something you can do especially when you're a kid and the other person is somebody that is in authority over you i think we've we've had those types of everyone's had that type of situation before like you can't go to a teacher and be like hey you're really hurting my feelings like what's that teacher gonna like they don't care you know <laughs> right well, teacher, they would but if they're a good teacher they also wouldn't hurt your feelings exactly so like <laughs> like situations like that right just as an example of something probably everybody has gone through a time or two um so i feel like role playing is a great way to explore those conversations and those situations um and uh and i i i used it so many times for things that was just like this was upsetting me it was an issue going on with a friend or something like that and talking about it was not working and putting a character through it through all of the kind of motions and through that ringer it really can like make you feel better about the real life situation like oh well this is a possible consequence um even sometimes having a super dramatic consequence and it's like okay well that's not gonna happen now i've played out the actual catastrophized <laughs> version of it and that's obviously silly <laughs> you know and you're not in space, so that can't happen <laughs> right so um so i just so in in those ways i feel like Playing out these scenarios, even these these very upsetting scenarios, can be super beneficial. Yeah, I mean, and that's this is a this is a old time therapy trick is writing out your trauma. Yep. Writing out your responses. How how are you going to respond to this thing? How do you want something to yep. go? This is all suggestions that therapists have given me time and time again. Right. Like write um, write the write that letter to your dad. You know. Yeah, <laughs> write, write that letter. You or, don't have to send um, it, but just, out, just go write it. <laughs> yeah, write out possibilities. Instead of keeping it up in your head, write out the list of possibilities of how the scenario can end. Um, yeah. Do all of this kind of stuff. So being able to take it a step further. And hell, I, I know people who have who have um, written out their, their traumatic experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and, and people write books all the time with their stories of the things that they lived through. Yep. And called it, like, you know, a therapy of some sort. So... This expression is is a tale as old as time, um, and being able to do that in a creative outlet with other people in the community is sometimes really nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and sometimes, especially if you're part of a group RP or even if you're just one on one, having a friend there to help you through this pro this this like process doesn't necessarily make it feel like that you're so alone in it. Yeah, I think that's one of the really great things about role play is that because you're doing it with other people, it's not this solitary writing activity. It's something where you're both kind of commiserating together um, and you can make friends in this in this way that is so much more intimate than than the kinds of friends that you make in other hobbies. Yes. Um, yeah. And I think that's because you... <sighs> 
I think that there's a lot of reasons. One, because I think writing is very intimate. Scenarios that people, most people write with partners are also very intimate. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, Bree, hey. hey. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. There's also something beautiful about, about like, you don't get to, like, people are not seeing you at your polished work. Yep. Which is something that I think is uniquely RPing. Because this, you are writing, but at the same time, this like, there's an improv to it, right? You don't have everything planned out. You don't know what's going to play out the best. You you haven't worked and slaved over a book that you're putting your soul into. Mm-hmm. Like you're you're actively doing the work, and someone is watching you do it, do it, and then responding in kind. And that's a really cool process. Yeah, because so nobody. I, I think that's a really good point. And role play is really uni- a unique style of writing where nobody expects that this is your best work ever. You know, every post. And yeah. um, and it's very freeing. It's very freeing in that sense. And then also so nice too that people don't necessarily know because of the relationship that you have that they're helping you through your trauma. Yeah. Like they might not be aware of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying like like that's what makes it awesome, but they they don't have the personal like they don't have the personal shoulder to bear if they feel like they're like helping you through something. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, they are helping you through something, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. Yes. A plus. That's good. <laughs> absolutely i totally agree um and yeah being able to to use this also as an emotional like re- relegator <laughs> like regulator, uh, regulator there you go that I was, yeah. <laughs> um yeah being able to use this process as an emotional regulator is is freeing in itself to sit there and be like i'm really stressed so i'm gonna put through my characters through stress so i don't have to feel stressed and then I'll just feel better about it because I've my characters then feel better about it. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I feel like that's a big reason if we talk about. Oh, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, I feel like Not that's. COVID, a, I promise. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's um that's a little bit about when we talk about like well, okay, why do I still do this? Like I'm 34 years old. Why am I still role playing? Right. I, I feel like some of that is a little bit a why. Like I, the emotional regulation that I get from it is is bar none. Like nothing else compares. You know, um, it's so good. <clears throat> so it looks like we've got a few more people in the in the stream than probably who were there at the beginning. If somebody could type an exclamation Winnie for me, please, um, to put that out there. Thank you. <clears throat> so yeah, I think I think when it comes to when it comes to that stuff, like that is still really important for me. You know, because I never, I don't want to be the person that. Um, that this all turns into like, oh, you know, Karen doesn't know how to handle her emotions and stuff like that. And I and I do think that if I dropped roleplay at this point, I would have to find something else to replace it. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know what I could find to replace it. <laughs> I'd have to do a lot more solo writing, I guess, is what, what would have to happen. I am so lazy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> No, like, I, yeah, I guess solo writing would be the answer, because I'm like, could I invest myself in, like, TV shows and movies more? Maybe, but yeah. then I wouldn't get the emotional, the emotional response that I want, because yeah. I don't get to control it, so I need to find something that I can I control. What can I control? Uh, I, writing, and if I can't write with other people, I guess it's gotta be me. Yeah, I mean, getting super into, like, a movie or a book or a TV show or something, like, that definitely helps, but it's not the same thing. It is not well, the same thing as writing it yourself. Yes. It is though, which is fine. Yeah, I agree with you. Not for me. <laughs> but people write, you know, when they're sad, they want to watch either happy movies or sad movies. Mm-hmm, people want to mm-hmm. listen to happy music or sad music. People want to listen if they're angry. They want to listen to music that amps them up. If they want to mm-hmm. go out for a night, they or they want to be like seduced. They listen to really sexy mu- music, like for sure. Or or watch, you know, porn. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for sure, yeah, absolutely. So, so people do do this like emotional regulation. It's just, it's so nice when you get to control it. <laughs> when you're like, I am doing this. I am making myself sad because yeah. I want to be sad. Or I am making myself happy because I want to be happy. And I guess that's part of being in kind of these quote unquote, I guess you could say like nerd girl spaces, you know, because um, a huge part of that is the transformative fiction aspect. It's like, yeah. you know, saying like, well, I want to write it this way, or I want the scenario to go this way, or I don't see enough of this trope and I want to see more of it, you know, or da 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 stuff like that. Yes. And, and you get, yeah. Oh, God, I love those spaces. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Me sobbing at the kitchen table at 2am. I am choosing this. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is 
is a choice. <gasps> I'm doing this to myself. Okay, but I've done that so many times. <laughs> There back when I actually, dead. back when I was young enough to actually be able to stay up till 2 a.m., let's be clear. Yeah. But I definitely did that. <laughs> I know there have been many a thread that I'm like, I plan with either you or Naomi or, mm -hmm. or anybody. And I'm like, oh, this is gonna, I am gonna just sob. This, this gonna night, hurt. This, this gonna night, hurt. <laughs> this night is not tonight. And so we're gonna plot it. And then when it comes to that night, it's just like, yeah, I chose to do this to myself. And <laughs> I want this. I want this. <laughs> Keep hurting me myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's um, so true though. But and then again, though, like there is this level of you need to be careful with yeah. what you are putting yourself through. And if you are either doing it to avoid, and you are doing it to the point where it's not a healthy coping mechanism anymore, mm -hmm. either having people who in your life who are willing to call you out on that, or being able to call yourself on that, is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And breaks are important. I think um, Mochi or somebody said that earlier. Like, it, sometimes you got to take a break from role play, and that's how it is. Yeah. And and sometimes it's... It sucks because it, it sometimes it... I think it's a very interesting point in time when your coping mechanism becomes a hindrance to your mental health. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard because you're like, suddenly I'm without this coping mechanism, but this coping mechanism is making me worse. Mm, yep. Um, and not sure, and not really sure how to handle that. And I know, I know almost everybody who's, who's stepped away from RP, almost every person I RP with has stepped away with RP at one point or a thread or a plot at one point because they're like, nope, this is going to be bad for me. Yeah. Like, this is not what <laughs> um, I need right now. <laughs> even, even if they plotted it, even if that's something that, like, we were working up to or something like that, sitting there and being like, no, things changed. Um, and this isn't okay. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> it happened. And that's okay, too. But it also takes a lot of strength and, and recognition and work on yourself to figure out at what point is this continuous, like, is this still healthy for me yep yep and that takes that takes energy to figure yeah. out um and it takes time and practice too <laughs> i mean how many uh, there have been multiple times where i have written a thread and i am numb at the end of it and i went oh this was this was not good <laughs> <laughs> like oops maybe i should not have done this a lesson uh, I'm still trying to learn. Yeah, Thumper, I mean, I, I think it's something that has to come with practice, right? And I can speak um, for myself. Uh, I don't always do this when I should. A one time that I did that I'm really glad that I did is after I graduated college and I started working. I took a break from role play while I was kind of getting used to that new life of not being a student anymore and being a worker. Um, and that was that was a very good decision. And kind of, kind of once I got used to it, then of course I came right back to role playing. So... <laughs> Um, but, uh, but I do think like when you're having major life changes or things like that, um, it's important to, to know like if you're okay or not. Yeah. I'm not following that advice. Mm -hmm. I've decided. <laughs> I understand. Um, it was just, you know, it's where I was at that time. And we talked Don't about all that it. when we talked, when we had our education episodes. So, you know, I just also <laughs> like to not be told what to do. So it's fine too. Um, <laughs> but no, I think that that is, that is something that, um, that is important to know yeah. and important to recognize, especially if you are using this as an emotional outlet. Yeah. Um, and, and being kind to yourself and also being kind to your partners. Um, as we've gotten older, I don't think that this happens as much, but Thumper saying what, what they just said, as far as I will destroy myself before disappointing others, I guarantee you um, that if anyone at any point in time came to anybody and sat there and was like, hey, this isn't good for my mental health, only an asshole would be like, well, you're disappointing me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't and even imagine. I can't even imagine. And you know, I'm talking directly to you, but also everybody else who is listening, you deserve better RP partners than that asshole. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, I mean, it, I think it's okay to be disappointed to get a message like that. But like, oh, you should absolutely. not be putting that disappointment onto the person who's trying to like share with you a vulnerability and a need. <laughs> <laughs> also, your disappointment in that moment when someone is being vulnerable about how they are feeling and where they are mental health wise should not be to tell the other person they are like they are disappointing them. 
because that is just going to make their mental health worse. Yeah, that's not appropriate. <laughs> because no one wants to disappoint anybody. Like, that's the other thing, too, is that nobody, and I know some people have it worse than others because of certain mental illnesses and disorders, but no one wants to disappoint anybody. So telling someone that you are disappointing them, unless you are doing it for like, hey, your bad habits are really disappointing me. <laughs> or like... <laughs> I mean, there's reasons. There's so reasons good. you would need to, but that moment that we're talking about now so is, is not is, one of them. <laughs> there is not one scenario in which that is helpful at any point in time. No, no, definitely not. <clears throat> Rant over. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good one, though. Okay, so I think we kind of, we've kind of, what was, what was uh, some of the, what was the other, another thing that we wanted to talk about in regards to, to this? I feel like there was something um, yeah. related well, to emotional I, regulation that I can't remember that I know we wanted to say. Uh, emotional regulation, we didn't have much else on, okay. just, but we were going to move on. I was going to move on to um, selfishly why a huge reason why I still do this um, is, is practice. Oh, I'm, I want to write a book like that is anybody who knows me knows that that is I want to write a YA series. Mm -hmm. um, I, that is, I've gone my life in the direction I've, I'm, I'm applying for grad school in order to be able to do that. Um, all of this fun stuff. Uh, I really, really want to do that. And so being able to continuously RP has allowed me to have I don't know, like have the opportunity to do all of these cool experimenting that mm -hmm. I I wouldn't necessarily get to do if I was a solo writer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also see a range of characters. I also think that as a writer, um, you you tend to write characters not who are exactly like yourself, but you know, a lot of characters carry your own baggage because you have an experience in your life and blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. So it's really mm -hmm. difficult to be able to get into somebody else's head or a character that you would not be like um that being able to be a part of rp has opened me up to seeing other people create characters that i would never have even imagined creating oh that's such a good point um and then being Gosh. able to sit there and be like oh i could i can write a version of that character not copy and paste but sit there and be like oh that char that type of character exists yeah it could be cool within a novel yeah, so. for sure. Um, I think that's such a good point. Uh, and I and I definitely think it, for me, it helps keep those creative muscles strong. Mm -hmm. Because the work that I do that um, educating work that I do in my day job, that requires a lot of creativity. And I feel like when I funnel all of my creativity into just that, I burn out real quick, right? Because that is stuff that I'm doing for the paycheck. That is stuff that I'm doing because yeah. um, I have to do it because, you know, you got got to eat, you know, <laughs> got got to eat, got to country, got to eat, got to pay the mortgage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if I do only that type of creative activity, I no longer have creative reserves to tap into. So for me, role play is that low stakes creative outlet that keeps my creativity muscles sharp and yeah landon um or thumper landon answered that question for you but yes we will that's a great question and we were we'll get to that do not worry i think i would love to cover that um so yeah i really i really agree with you on that not because i necessarily want to write a book i mean maybe someday i will i don't know it's not like a specific dream of mine <laughs> um but uh but i i could do it someday uh, but more just because I, I, dang it, I want a creative outlet that is not, that is not for, that is not required of me. Yeah. I, um, yeah, that, that like, being able to have the freedom to do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> fun, and, that, and everyone, a lot of people have that, if they're creative, you have that ability to have that creative outlet. So that's, yes. that's what RP is, it's, it's just a hobby. Mm -hmm. Um, it just happens to be free and on the internet, which people are like amazed by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also, um, I love that I get the opportunity and the practice to world build. Yes. Um, so very often when, when writers, I mean, again, it's, it's just like RP consistently gives me opportunities that I wouldn't necessarily have if I continued solo writing. Right. Because how many times do authors get to build world after world after world? They don't. They they typically stick to one or two worlds depending and they and they stay in that world in order to complete a book series or write one book or whatever. 
Um, and then they have to move on to the next book. And, and sometimes that book is in that world series sometimes, or in that world. Sometimes it's in another world. And with RP, we get to invent and I get to help write a world and create a world every two or three, two or one, one or two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's fucking cool. Yeah, <laughs> I love world building. Like, active. I love world building. When I do, when I do solo writing and stuff like that, like world building is what I gravitate towards. You know, that's like the thing that I really, really love to do. Um, so I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. And when and you're I, writing solo, when you're writing solo, like there just isn't nearly as much opportunities for that because there's just so much more other stuff that goes into it. Yeah. And I, and it's that communal aspect. Like I love world building with you and Naomi and, and mm -hmm. Kendra and Shadow and being able to have like, and Thumper, God, Thumper is such a good world builder. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Like that Scourge um, passage, that Scourge <laughs> passage for the current RP, like it's so good. It's so, so good. good. <laughs> <laughs> But um, no, being able to have those those opportunities and that other people support you is so cool. It's such a way um, that you really only get, that I've really only experienced as a solo writer in workshops. And even then, um, people aren't helping you write in workshops. They're just opening up avenues to different ideas. Yeah. Um, and instead, because it's RP, there's a teamwork base to it that a lot of people are, are contributing their own thoughts that then get to inspire and work and open up avenues to you that you hadn't thought of previously. Yep. So it's it's a very it's very nice, and um, so I continue to RP to keep those muscles strong, but also because I'm learning so much about myself as a writer uh, in RP as an RPer. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, because you're constantly being pushed by other people in this way, you kind of are forced to to learn about yourself. Like you don't you don't get the yeah. choice not to. Yeah, and I know, I certainly know because of how much practice I've been in where my strengths are versus where, where my weaknesses are. It becomes kind of unavoidable to notice, right? Um, you know, and I think most of us, uh, most of us, at least in our groups, are, are very self-critical. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it becomes, it, it becomes impossible to ignore in, in that regard. Yes, exactly. Um, and that it's... I don't know. It's just, it's so freeing. It's so nice. It is really. Um, and then I, we've touched on, on our last topic that, um, we had, we had kind of talked about quite a bit, but the socialization aspect of yes. Karen, Naomi and Shadow, Kendra, Thumber is all in there too, but we have known each other. The four of us have known each other for seven, eight years. At oh my this gosh. Point. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming um, up on eight years. I think it's coming up on eight years because I was I was nineteen and I'm now twenty seven. Yeah, that so, sounds yeah. right. I mean, I'm not going to do the math uh, right now, so if it's wrong, sorry. No, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but eight years. You guys are my friends. Yeah. Yeah, for <laughs> I sure. Have, I have hard moments in life, great moments in life, um, you know, non-existent moments in life. <laughs> have been there for each other christmas cards are exchanged um gifts sometimes are exchanged like yep. we are we are friends and so being able to have a close knit group of friends who share a hobby is really fucking awesome yeah because the hobby kind of the hobby kind of makes it so there's always an excuse right like yeah, there's always absolutely. an excuse to hang out which is wonderful and at this point like i'm pretty sure that if i had taken a break or or if naomi takes a break or if you take a break even we would still be close. We'd still be friends. There would still be talking, but being able to to have that hobby means that we're talking to each other almost every day. Yeah, which is really nice. <laughs> <In some> form. <laughs> um, it might not always be in the DMs, but we have some sort of contact almost every single day. Yeah. Um, and and so like that's a great feeling mm -hmm. having that friendship and and as a being able to find that group and even if you're not in a group kind of person being able to find that one partner mm -hmm. that you really vibe with and write with is great yeah <laughs> i keep saying that word but it, there's no other way for it it's just it's it's like any other friendship yeah and i think and i think when it comes to role play there's a lot of people that are here looking for that community aspect and um and that's really what they're here for and, I, and i've talked about before where how i don't think like <sighs> How do I put this? I, I think that if you're here for the community and really nothing else, then you might have some problems, you know, connecting because then you're not really here for yeah. the hobby. 
uh, which it can cause some struggles. But at the end of the day, we know from experience, from what our players have told us, that um, a lot of them do, they, they come for the role play, right? But they stay for the community. <laughs> Because we're a fucking awesome community, but yes, and I. But that's why a lot of people stay, right? Like, yeah. and that can be any hobby. People can, if if we can relate it to working out, people go for the, the exercise equipment, but stay for people that they might need at the gym. Yeah. Or other people in the group, like knitting, book book circles. All of this is true. That yes, it's this hobby that brings you together, but it's really the community that keeps you there. Yeah. Um. And and yeah, obviously. We, if you're just in it trying to be like, I'm just trying to find friends, <laughs> um, it's going to be a lot harder. Yeah. Because you have to be passionate and like what you're doing. Well, and I think people sense that you're not really here for the hobby and it's kind of it kind of turns them off. Like, I think, we're, you know, people, people, we're very empathetic creatures, humans, right? So I think we, we kind of know when that's happening and, yeah. and aren't so into it. <clears throat> yes, but, exactly. Um, and then it, it comes across like weird and fake, but and we might not even know what it is. It just might come across where it's like, oh. Okay, this person's odd. Yeah, <laughs> they, they don't, you don't know why. Lot, do <laughs> <laughs> for, someone, for being part of a writing community, they certainly don't write a lot, do they? <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> but I think I think when it comes to us, and we've we've mentioned this before, you know, at when we decided to close um, "Love Our Only Hope," that first role play that we really that we really made together. Um, you know, we didn't know if we were going to all go our separate ways or if we were going to keep writing together and, and find out, you know, were we just here for role play or were we really a community too? And we found out we were really a community too. And I, and that was like kind of the, the magical moment, you know, and, yeah. and for, and for those of you that are kind of like hunting for that, cause I know a lot of people are hunting for that. I, and I said this before, but I just want to say it again, cause it's relevant to this episode. I was 27 years old when that happened. Right. And I had been role playing since I was 11. So this isn't that that type of community feeling that we're looking for that a lot of us are looking for it takes time to find it but i do think that it is one of the magical parts of role play when you do find it yeah it's um i would not be role playing if i hadn't found it yeah like and and i love and i love the subject i ha we have a weekly podcast <laughs> because of how much i love role playing mm -hmm. but it, it is <laughs> the I mean it's the you know getting a notification from Karen or plot ideas with Naomi or or um being able to like create characters with shadow that really keep me invested and involved yeah um especially during hard times especially when I get busy so being able to to have that community support you is really freaking nice yeah it really um, is and it kept me sane and also being a part of of the of the hobby itself yeah um because sometimes it's a lot easier when you go through so much rejection as far as friends go um especially in the real world that at some point you start being like well is it really worth doing this reaching out trying to find people online trying to find people even in person is it really worth it and then when you find those people that make it worth it you're reminded that like oh yeah it is <laughs> yeah exactly um, most, I'm so glad you're here with us today. I think this is the first I've seen you in the chat, but they have a question that I want to read out. Um, I haven't been so non-anonymous non when role-playing recently. My relationship with RPing has usually been a space to purely escape. What tips can you provide to get adjusted into an established group? So anytime that you're joining a group that's already established, and because we experience this, right? And a lot of people yeah. that, that come into our groups experience this because we've been role-playing with each other for so long. Um, you know, if, if that community aspect is really important to you, like it is to us, my biggest tip is just to like relax and be patient with yourself. Um, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It takes time. But I think that if you, if you get that sense of community that like, oh, these are my people, I feel like you kind of know it when you see it and then really all you have to do is be patient and it ends up happening and i don't know maybe that's like a little bit too hopeful but i feel like that's the case you know no i, I think you're exactly right because i think we have we have seen and done like a multitude of times where coming into an rp um 
where that the group is already established and like wanting to be a part of it you haven't without lack of a better word you haven't done your dues yet yeah you haven't you haven't made those connections you haven't proven that's like coming into a group of people who have been going to school together since kindergarten and be like i want to be everyone's best friend <laughs> it's like that is not going to happen my <laughs> that's friend. Not how friend but even though this is over the internet that's not how you do it so how do you do it you be patient you talk to people you make connections you plot Mm -hmm. You write stories, you offer your characters up for whatever you want to write, but also what other people want to write. Yeah. You recognize that to be a part of a group means that there is no one person or leader. Um, and if you don't vibe with that group too, because I think that there's a huge amount of people that are like, well, I really want to find this community and they don't seem to exist. And so when I find a community- Oh, and like they I try to force it. onto it. Even though I don't particularly like the people, we've had that a couple of times. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't like us. Why are you here? <laughs> yeah. And it's really obvious to like everybody but them, which is really sad. <laughs> um, to just sit there and go, oh, okay. Either I don't like these people, so I need to get out, or I do like these people, and I'm just going to hang around and write and do what I'm supposed to do. And then. I guarantee you that if you are participating either in the chat or in the group, people are going to start talking about your characters. Mm -hmm. People are going to start talking about things. For mm -hmm. us, people, you know, as soon as you start coming in and you start helping us world build, God, people are going to start talking about you for that. Then people are going to start talking about if you make memes for the RP. Like, like you will become a part of the friendship. You just have to become a part of the friendship. Yeah, it's just like a patience thing, right? Yeah. And I feel like... So yeah, and I, I feel like when it comes when it comes to this, um, I think sometimes we get impatient, right? And and social connections are very important to 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 us, you know, as humans, right? Like it's 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 wired into your brain to feel this way, um, and so you know you want it you want it fast, you want it now, and I just think that I try to be a little bit more like a cat, right? And when a cat tries to make friends with you, they don't like jump on your face and lick it, you know? They just kind of like sit next to you and hang around for a while and they slowly like kind of get a little closer and a little closer and then all of a sudden you have a new pet that you did not ask for. <laughs> and I think and I think for us as Eric describing <laughs> Sorry, Karen describing how she picked and adopted all of us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it works. You know, role players, uh, we, we, are very, we are a very shy breed of human, okay? We are a very shy breed of human. And that method, I have used it many, many times. And I'm going to tell you right now, it always works. When it doesn't work, it's because I have chosen poorly and I really shouldn't have tried to be that person's friend in the first place. So that is my advice for that. <laughs> and I do I, think taking that method will will help your role play experience and, and kind of have you feel that some of that magic that we're talking about. Yeah. I also think it, this is extremely important because people have tried this too. <laughs> um, don't go in and then start trying to break the group up. Oh, yeah, trying, we've seen that. <laughs> like somebody comes um, in and like tries to separate certain people and make their yeah. own little group. And it's or like, like <laughs> it doesn't ever work. Be, I don't know. I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people when they see a group like us, like I and I and I hate that we're just talking about us, but this is our experience. Um, see us can interpret our friendship as clicky um, and have accused us of that, by the way. Um, and we try not to be. We try. I, I mean, I'm sure we are sometimes I, like I'm not going to say we're not clicky because. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But um, don't try to then form a sub click <laughs> with <laughs> one of us <laughs> and talk shit about other people in that group. Because I guarantee you, everyone is sharing DMs. <laughs> Just gotta put that out there. Or I mean, friends where it's like, okay, yeah, I guess. Like I like they're fine. I guess they talk shit about this person. Um, it, it happens. That's that's part of being in a friendship, and there's nothing wrong with that. But don't try to come in and be bitchy about it. That's <laughs> going to be my other piece of advice, is that it's just not going to go well for you. Because A, that's going to make enemies, which if you're trying to make friend group, not a good way to start a friend group. Um, hey, that's, um, just... that's how all of my friend groups were in middle school and high school, which is why I have some yeah. trauma and started to role play to avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> to kind of tie it back in, right? 
did we just get called the God Squad? Yeah, I think that's what Zumper said. So, I'm not sure about so that. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about all that, but okay. <laughs> Please. I am the only God. There isn't a squad here. It's <laughs> just me. Sounds good. Kidding. You can do that. <clears throat> um, but yeah, we've had that before too, where, where we had somebody that was part of the group and they they like say like they didn't like Karen right like I don't know like it, we've had it happen all it's of us happened. had this happen at one at one point <laughs> they didn't like Karen okay but they really really love Landon like that Landon is their favorite okay so they start talking shit about me to Landon literally all that all that that causes is for Landon to send me these DMs and be like FYI this person feels this way I don't know what you want to do with this information but here you go. That is literally the only thing it results in. It doesn't make me mad. It doesn't really, you know, Landon, it's not yeah. really like a thing that affects her friendship with that person. It just kind of means that they're going to tell me. And yeah. it's just, and we've had it happen so many times and it's really silly every time. But yeah, that's all that and, happens. <laughs> and like, we also understand this is a group of people, which means people are talking. It's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Um, but if you come in it with malicious intent... That's not the way to do it. Oh, Bree, thank you so much. Yeah, um, so <laughs> Naomi, I've been kind of, it. I've been kind of like low key encouraging her to do that because I mean I've seen some of your writing and I think it's so amazing. But you know I don't want anyone to feel forced. Um, but I'm so glad that you're here now. <clears throat> yeah, no, I have been very. I'm. Oh I just. Like, and here's the other thing, too, is that Jane, even Jane said it, like, such a tight-knit group. And I'm like, Jane, you do realize you're in the group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you're a core it. player. You're a core player for sure. <clears throat> everyone who, who, everyone, like, that's the other thing, too, is I think that people, like, look at it and go, oh, it's this main mod team or whatever that is the real friendship and everyone is just there. And I'm like, no, the whole community is everyone in the RP. Yeah, it's true. Everyone is part of the group. The amount of effort and time and energy that you put into the group will will change other people's in the group's opinion of you um, and, and might make you more like secure and whatever. But friendships and group dynamics are not about who can be the most popular. <laughs> Everyone in the group exists in the group. My God, please um, tell my high school self that. <laughs> no, because your high school wouldn't have to me. No, and she would not have. She'd have been like, fuck you. You don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. <laughs> you're so old. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, that's, anyway, that was a rant on our groups, but that is a reason why people still RP and why a huge reason why I still RP is because that's what connects me to so many great people. Yep. And we continue and to meet, and we continue to meet new awesome that. people. Yeah, like I, I it, that's what I was just about to say is it makes me sad to think that I wouldn't have had an opportunity to meet Thumper mm -hmm. or to meet Jane or to meet um, Marina or to meet any like anybody who has expanded our group um, and all these wonderful people that I've had the opportunity to write with. It makes me so sad to think that I would have existed in this world without meeting any of them. Yeah, for sure. Because um, there's so many people that Roleplay has brought to us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Jane. <laughs> there is no cut, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so I think I, I think um, you know to and Landon used this word when when she was when we were talking about like my original experiences that led me to RP and kind of led me to stay in RP. But um, I do think that what has kind of made role play become so special to me and why I continue to do it is it's one of the few places in my life that is non hierarchical. And that mm -hmm. gives me so much comfort and lowers my stress so much to have a space where I'm not having to worry about what power this person has over me or what power I have over this other person or things of that nature, you know, because that is exhausting. It's exhausting for all of us. You know what? Even if you like the hierarchy, even if you feel like that gives you comfort, I promise you it's exhausting for you too. Like, it's just so much to think about all the time. So role play is just this wonderful, like anarchic space that uh that i don't know what i would do without it like i don't know especially with the state of how our world is at this point like what would i do i don't know i would go i would be crazy i just i'm, I'm i would be crazy that's i'm convinced yeah i would i'd have a lot less friends 
<laughs> and then I wouldn't have a platform in which all of you had to listen to me talk for two hours every <laughs> single Saturday. <laughs> True. <laughs> and that would be miserable. <laughs> what would you do with your life? Who knows? I don't. I'd probably join. I'd probably either join or, or start a cult. I don't know. <laughs> Someone to listen to like me <laughs> think that I'm very important. <laughs> you are very important, Landon. Well, you're important to me anyway. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Say it again, but slower. Just kidding. Don't. I will start wow. crying. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think those those social connections, those social connections are a huge part of what keeps me role playing. I mean, they're not all of it. the The disassociation is is important to me. The emotional regulation yeah. is important to me. <laughs> But um, I, th I feel like I feel like if we didn't have this community, then I probably would be taking more frequent breaks. And, and I don't mean that from like an I don't I don't want to disappoint you guys or something like that. I mean it from like a I would miss you guys, you know. <laughs> yes. I it's you you get yeah you it's it's hard to put in. It's hard to put in energy into something if you're not getting something out of it. Mm -hmm. And I personally feel that without the social dynamics that I build, either within the group or the one-on-one -on -one people that I RP with or have RP'd with in the past, um, I, I, was, I wasn't getting anything out of it. I wouldn't yeah. have gotten anything out of it if I didn't get something out of that. Yeah. And so. it's not that I haven't done solo okay. writing before. I, I definitely have, and I've enjoyed it, but it's, it's not the same. It is not the same. It's, not. it's it's wonderful in so many different ways, and it's terrible in so many other ways too. <laughs> yeah, like, but it's even just, it's not it's apple and oranges. They're both writing, but you can't compare them. Yeah, I would say even from an emotional regulation standpoint, and, and you had mentioned this, but um, just to touch touch on this for me as well, I think when it comes to to that emotional regulation, part of it is getting the response. You know, it is getting the response from the other character, from the other person. The, and you don't get that with solo writing. You know, with solo writing, you have to finish the whole thing pretty much before anyone reads it. Or I guess in the case of fanfic, you have to finish the, the chapter, right? But you have to you have to write so much more before you get any feedback whatsoever. Um, whereas role play, you can get like, it's like instant, instant gratification, that instant feedback, you know? Yeah, I think it's accountable. Mm -hmm. um, because if you, we all, like I said earlier, when um, Thumber mentioned her, her not wanting, or there, sorry, they're wanting to not. We're still switching, um, sorry. <laughs> it will get better. Um, they're wanting to disappoint people. Yeah. That that keeps me honest with that I have to write responses. <laughs> that I that people that this is ridiculous. That this, at times it gets ridiculous that people are waiting weeks on or even a week on me to respond to something. Um, I need to get a response out. Whereas with writing, I owe no one like solo writing. I owe no one a response but myself, and I will disappoint myself seven days out of the week. <laughs> so. <laughs> yep. For sure, because like I mean, even if you've got even if you've got people asking you like, "Hey, where's your next fic? Where's your next you know drabble stuff like that?" Like, it's not the same. You don't owe people in the same way as where like if you don't respond to your role play partner, they also cannot finish writing the scene. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, crippling crippling anxiety makes it me want to just be like, "I'm so sorry. I love you. Let me respond. <laughs> don't hate me. <laughs> don't hate me." Um, shall we address Thumper's question from earlier? Yes, let's talk about that. So if you could repeat the question for us. And, yes, uh, the first yeah. part of the question, I th there are two questions. How does your roleplay usage change as you've grown from um, kiddies, I'm assuming kids, mm -hmm. to adults, to, uh, to being an adult? Um, I have slowed way the fuck down. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, life happened <laughs> i suddenly had about 10 more things that i was expected to do um and i realized that life did not revolve around rp mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah <laughs> yep for sure i would say for me um that's very similar i'm just changing the overlay guys that's why you're seeing the background for a second 
Um, I would say for me, it is very, very similar. I, uh, when I was starting out role playing, I was doing it in chat rooms largely, and I was very young, which meant I had all the time in the world. I had all the time in the world. So I would just sit and role play rapid fire for hours upon hours upon hours, right? Yeah. And then after I came back to role play, after I started my career, I had a job that was mentally like creatively and, and all of that stuff. It was freaking, it was like easy. It was so easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy for everybody. It was easy for me, right? It was easy for exact, for specifically how my brain is wired, right? Um, so I would still, I could still get on and rapid fire role play all day, every day. And it was no problem. But once I became um, a trainer, once I started getting into kind of this education path, that was no longer true. I could no longer rapid fire all day, every day. I had to regulate when exactly I role played and how much I did to make sure that I got everything done that I wanted to get done. And there is no, there's no ands, ifs, or, or buts around that. Like, I would love to go back to rapid fire role playing all day, every day, but that is just not something I can do. And, and if I try, um, what ends up happening is I just burn myself out and, and mentally really tax myself and hurt myself. So that is really what has changed. And it's, and it's changed because I've got a career now that I really like and I want to do well at. And that means I put energy into it, which I never did before. You know, I was a pretty good student in school. I didn't have to put a huge amount of energy into school. You know, um, when I first started my career, I was pretty good at that job. Like it was stupid easy for me. So I didn't have to put much energy into it. So, <laughs> you know, uh, when you have that sort of situation, it's a little bit like, well, I can't rapid fire then. I can't. Um, that would be cool, but I can't. So that is what that is. And that is the huge way that it's changed for me or one of the huge ways that it's changed for me. Yeah, I am. Um, role play for when I started actively doing it after my, I guess I didn't really take a break, but after high school. <laughs> so in, in high school, it was, it was very high on my priority list, but that was simply because of the people that I was RPing with. And we were all seeing each other in person. These were all in real life friends that I was RPing with. Um, after high school, uh, it became the number one priority for me, probably. Because it was ways that I kept in contact with people from high school, but it was also the thing that gave me joy in a very miserable time in my life. Um, mm. So it was my number one priority, making sure replies got out, making sure I was engaged, making sure I was doing all of these things, that I was actively writing characters. It was my number one thing. I didn't have many bills. The job I worked was terrible, but I was doing it <laughs> um, <laughs> full time. I was basically a live-in servant indentured servant um, <laughs> this is when we met so I, I very vividly remember and um and thought it was uh, like the strangest thing at the time but i didn't oh, know you that well so <laughs> really careful looking back at it um <laughs> but yeah no it basically so that was low on it wasn't it was just every day that was just existing it wasn't work there was no on and off time it was existing so as far as priorities went role play was my number one mm -hmm. and as i've gotten older uh, things like bills started happening <laughs> and work and I was at school. And so suddenly school, oh, I first before school, I moved. Mm -hmm. And um, th that was a huge priority. And then suddenly I needed to build a life here in Maine. And then suddenly I um, started going back to school. And at, at first I was really terrible at communicating the fact that role play was no longer my number one priority. Mm. Um, and that, was, that was a huge reason why I took a break is because all of a sudden it was, it was all or nothing for me in my head almost. Um, so then suddenly I took this break and when I came back at it, I had three or four priorities ahead of role play. And then I've just been taking on more priorities. <laughs> <laughs> it never stops. And, Once it uh, starts, it never stops. Right. <laughs> it, it, it never stops. And I, and I've discovered that this is the thing about adulting. 
Um, but also just recognizing like where, how many priorities I'm capable of handling and where it falls on the list. Um, and unfortunately it's, it's no longer top three. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's might, yeah, I don't even think it's top five. Yeah. Not going to lie. There's things that I have to make sure are okay. Mental health, job, work, school, all of these kinds mm -hmm. of things, bills. Um, and, and because of that, the amount of emotional spoons or energy that I have that I can dedicate to it is far less than it was when I was 19. Yeah. So automatically just for that reason alone, my usage has gone way down. Yep. Um, and probably, unfortunately, will continue to. Yeah. Um, until I will have to recognize like, okay, where, where does it fall? And that's okay. Uh, which I think if you, I think that that would be a good transition for me, at least to answer this question. Because the second half of the question is, do we ever see ourselves stopping? Mm. Um, and I will be completely honest. Probably when I start working on a book, when I start having to do solo writing. Um, like as a job? Yeah, not yeah, as a job, but maybe even as like, I'm like I, I kind of said earlier, I'm going for my MFA, um, which means that I will be writing when I'm not teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, and it might be really, really hard to write on top of writing. I don't know that for sure, but I can see myself having to take the break. Um, but I don't ever see myself stopping until other people stop. Like I see, I see a break, but I don't see people like actually like setting it down and being like, I'm never going to RP again <laughs> <laughs> um, until people like you or, or Thumper or Naomi or anyone's like, you know what, this has been a good run, but I'm good, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess um, that's, that's a little bit how I feel as well. Like, I don't know, maybe someday, um, there could potentially be a day. I don't think I'll ever like totally stop, but there might be a day where it's such a low priority that I can't maintain joining groups anymore or yeah. things of that nature. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't, I, I guess the, the quick answer is no, I will never like stop. But what do I mean by stop? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, uh, yes and no, because the, the older that I get in the, and the more other stuff that I take on, the less time that I have for role play. And, and as far as I know, there is, there's no way to get more than 24 hours in a day. <laughs> yeah, not yet. <laughs> yeah, so, so in, in that sense, it's kind of like a, a yes or a no, but there's no like, there's no like date on it, you know, like I don't have a goal to write a book or anything. So I don't have like a, oh, once this thing happens, that might actually happen for me. But, um, but I, I would say, you know, maybe, Maybe I'll role play forever, but probably not. Probably something will happen to where I really can't anymore. And I would I would not be surprised if that was the case. Yeah, I mean, I think about the fact that I um I want to be a, a mom one day, and I know that obviously we have moms in our group, so that's not saying that you have to stop to do that. But if I'm teaching on top of being a mom, on top of writing my own books, yeah. on top of this, on top of that, will you be able it to? It's it seems questionable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it seems questionable that you'd still be able to role play at that point. Yeah, and it's it's it, and it is that it is that idea that comes with any hobby. Like, let's be honest, this isn't just a role play specific question. It is at what point do you prioritize this thing, mm -hmm. and at what point can you no longer do that? Yep. Um, yep. And that can be it can be knitting club for some people. Yeah. Um, it, it happens that I think that role play actually allows us to have better access because we are online mm -hmm. and yes, while there, there are specific times where people are more, tend to be more active um, as, as far as like in the day, there is no actual def defined time where you have to be there at 11 o'clock on Thursday. Yeah. You have to be there during this time. At least we don't run our RPs that way. So um, there is a little bit more freedom that you are able to like squeeze in an hour here or do Saturdays here or do Sundays here or, or whatever. But you, you can have a little bit more freedom, but that also depends on your partners. If your partners are want a response every single day and you can't do that, then then that might be that you have to move on from those partners. Mm hmm Yep. And I think there's there's another way that role play has changed a lot for me, um, besides just my own pacing. It's I don't have any tolerance for bullshit anymore. <laughs> 
Yeah. I used to let people talk to me and treat me in some like I used to put up with some bullshit. Like that emotional manipulation. Um I used to put up with like like straight up harassing me for replies. I would just let people do that. Um I yeah. would agree to plots I didn't want to do. Uh, you know, I used to put up, I, I would just put up with it because I wanted to role play. And that was more of a priority to me. And that is not the case anymore. I do not do anything I don't want to do. I don't say anything I don't want to say. I don't spend time on anyone I don't want to spend time on. Um, that is not a thing. So, you know, I know a lot of us as role players are, are, are insecure, but as an older role player, I think this probably speaks to other older role players like, if I'm doing a thread with you, if I'm talking to you, it's because I want to. Period. End of story. I do not do that stuff anymore. I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. Um, and I think from talking to other older role players, that's that's a pretty common thing that changes as well. Yeah, and I think that goes hand in hand with having time and energy, right? Yeah. Is um, is that if you don't have the if it's a low priority or a lower priority in your everyday life, then the amount of energy you have to put forth to this thing becomes more limited. Yep. Which means that then suddenly that limited energy is expected to span across the same amount of area? Absolutely no. So you have to cut out the bullshit somewhere. Yep. And that could be there are people who are harassing for replies. It could be, you know, this thing or that thing or, or whatever it is that within the RP community you don't prioritize. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's... I appreciate that that question was asked because I hadn't even thought of answering that question, but I think that that is an incredibly important topic to talk about when we when we talk about why we do it is at what point will we not do it? Yeah. Cuz I'm someday someday that'll probably happen. You know, someday that'll probably happen. When I have no idea. I'm not planning for it. Um, you know, I I don't see it happening anytime soon personally but you no. know i not see a global pandemic happening so i'm not like it <laughs> yeah <laughs> like who the hell knows um you know it's one of those things that uh that i just think you know at some point i will probably be too busy for it and and that's that's really all that's about it's it's not it's not like i i ever want to stop role playing i don't ever want to stop role playing um but i recognize that at some point in my life i might not be able to yeah yeah, I mean, not gonna lie, it'd be really hard to picture me at 80 still RPing with you guys. I like the idea, like, on a, on a surface <laughs> level, but I'm like, I, that seems, like, really hard to, like, picture. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah um, but I don't know. I mean, there are still definitely older role players, not probably not in their 80s, right? But, like, there are still role players, like, in their 40s and their I 50s, mean, stuff like that. We come across that, which gives me hope. Yeah, so we could. I know people who are also d and Ding. Um, who D and D in their in their eight or like in their seventies or whatever? I know some people who do that. Yeah, which means that of course people can still RP. It just might change how we do it. It might yeah. it might not be a full group. It might be a closed group. Yep. It might just be you and I sending text threads back and forth ever mm -hmm. so every couple of weeks. Who the fuck knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could definitely see that. I could see my role play changing from like not stopping role playing, but like groups are not a thing anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be poking out replies in my nursing home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but somebody, you might find, I know that you're saying that you don't want a family and kids, which is great, but you might find that you absolutely love something so much that you can't. <laughs> like, yeah. who knows? Maybe you become a full-time scuba diver. And then you're just like, well, all the days and all the time that I want to do is something I, I want to do scuba diving and I don't have time to RP anymore. That's mm -hmm. a total real realistic thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could happen. Like, I mean, I could, I, I, I could, I could definitely see getting to a point in my career where, like, I don't, I don't have time for hobbies anymore, and I have to kind of do them at a, at a very, in a very different way. You know what I mean? Because there, there are elements of that that I just really, really love. I love educating. You know what I mean? And I looked at all the hobbies that I had at sixteen, and I was about to say that they're not the same, but they are. So. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean mine aren't, mine aren't though like i i was in um i was in band you know in high school oh, and, yeah. and things like that and um you know i i don't do that anymore like i don't know i i, I was very good at it you know i played clarinet and i was amazing at it but i haven't done that in decades so you know 
Yeah, I mean, and I was the same way with theater and acting. I'm certainly not doing theater and acting right now. Um, and, and, and things change. Things yeah. and situations change. And it doesn't necessarily mean other people or kids or families come into your life. It just means that you might find passions other places. Yeah, for but sure. That's okay, because for the meantime, we find it very useful and very good to have in our lives. Yeah, absolutely. I love role playing. <sighs> I, would, I love role playing. For the foreseeable future, I don't want to stop. <laughs> I do not want to stop either. Mm -hmm. um, and I am very grateful for the opportunity to do it, which is why Freya's voyage is one of my favorite things this week. So come check us out if you're not already a part of it. Because we're hopping over there. Yep, we really are. Um, we've had some really uh, uh, amazing first burst of activity. It's been really awesome. Yes. And like I said, second characters are coming. So it's a lot of fun. It's all new, which means like you don't have to know everything when you join. It's, yep. it's just kind of like, oh. Right now is the easiest in time. <laughs> oh, Thumper is writing is running a map, an app. That's good. I expect it later today. Yes, I got to do mine I'm this afternoon too for Aaron. I'm giving you a due date, Thumper. <laughs> yep. I got to do mine too, um, Aaron, this afternoon. That's the plan. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. All right. Shall we do the good news of the week? Yes, um, let's do it. Let me just do that and save the game. Paste it in. Paste it. Okay. Let's go over to my internet browser. Internet. <laughs> Okay. All right, so here we go. 400 <laughs> families woke up on Christmas to $250 gift cards left outside with a poem, anonymous gifts totaling $100,000. Oh my God. Okay, tell yeah, us about this. This sounds amazing. All right, so um, in, I couldn't remember, I don't remember the uh, city, but it was some, somewhere here in America. Uh, about the week after Thanksgiving, or not Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, families across this town literally just woke up. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's in Canada. Okay. Um, in Edmonton, um, woke up with $250 gift cards. And it's this cute little poem basically saying, I don't know you, but here, I hope this little gift helps. It's a hard time right now. I got it up on the screen. Um, we can read it. Do you want me to read it? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know you, but I know you opened the secret Santa envelope this year. We all felt at the end of our rope. So I hope this little gift lifts your hopes. Aw. <laughs> the whole world ain't as dark as it sometimes seems. There's light if you look for it, if you know what I mean. The next six months every day gets lighter and longer. Still standing after 2020, you'll emerge stronger. For someone in need, you'll be their first responder. You're a fighter. You are tested, you will conquer. Whatever it is that you set out to do, remember to just believe in you. Don't need this, please pass the baton, for that is the way hope carries on. Oh, I love that. I love yeah, that it even so says, cool. like, if you didn't need it, make sure you pass it on to somebody else. Absolutely. Um, and I, it is such a difficult time right now here, uh, in the world but also just with trying to feel feeling so separated from our communities and so isolated because of what COVID has done to us that to know that there is like people out there who are doing this um and even if it's you know just a person who oh yes Brie it is mm -hmm. <laughs> um oh yeah and even if it's, a, if it's a person who's doing it or who even if it's a company who's doing it it's still anonymous and it's amazing that someone is willing to help out their neighbors and and spread a little cheer and a little bit of help and it makes it makes the world just seem a little bit lighter to know that good people are out there supporting each other mm -hmm. i think this was probably an individual because they did walmart gift cards and you know walmart did not do this so <laughs> It was probably an individual. I, I didn't know. I I think it is an individual, but I also don't want to like. Yeah, come we out don't know. know that it was Walmart. Yeah, but like, <laughs> um, a hundred thousand dollars is nothing to scoff at, right? And it's yeah. all anonymous. It's not like even tax deductible. 
Um, I actually don't know how taxes work in Canada, in Canada, <laughs> but I'm going to assume it's not. Um, and so, like, this is literally someone who's just spending a hundred thousand dollars of of their own money, who obviously knows that they don't need it, and is giving it to people who do need it. Mm-hmm. And that's fantastic. This is so nice. I love this. It's what a, a good nice little story. Warm, good news. Yeah. Thing, especially around Christmas, especially because January is statistically the hardest, uh, darkest, and de- most depressed month. Uh, and also financially, I meant financially hardest, uh, darkest, and depressed month mm-hmm. um, of the year, statistically. Yep. Because we all just spent all of our money on Christmas, right? And yeah. it's cold. So we're, you know, trying to keep warm up and all of those things. Yeah, more suicides happen in January than they do at any other point in time in the year. Yep. Um, it just it it is a it is a place. It, it's nice to see that this is happening. Yeah, yeah. This is a really nice bright spot. Nice bright spot for right now. Um, <clears throat> I also want to check on if this is okay. I want to check on how the Winnie's GoFundMe is doing. Yeah. So this is the one we've been linking, guys. Um, so these this is this is the situation that she's in. Um, or that he's in, this is her, her husband and and son. And, uh, basically my understanding from reading this and also from speaking with Winnie is that her son is, is on the spectrum and, uh, he does have some special needs as a result of that. So that's what this is for. It was at $5,000 when I, when we first found it, but it was really close to meeting it. It looks like they went over and they upped it to 7,500, uh, dollars. So, you know, if you, if you have the means to help them out, please do. Um, her her son is awesome. She used to tell stories about him all the time. So um, I, I know that they'll that they really need it and uh, and they will use it for him. Yeah, and it's 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 a good cause. Yeah, yeah. We want to help out our our neighbors when we can, right? Yeah, she supported us as much as she could, and and I'm glad that we are able to do even if this is even if it's a small thing to support mm-hmm. her. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Be a good neighbor. Yes. Mutual aid, right? Yes. So. So that's it. That's the end of the show. Oh my gosh. Hey, it went pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> so we um this was our first our first one back. Uh we're still kind of getting into the swing of things, of course. Um we're gonna be having a show next week. We're like back on regular schedule now, basically. Uh so thank yeah. you guys for all for joining us on our first one back. Um I guess let's let's do our ending thing. Landon, where can everybody find you? Uh you can find me on ooh, there's two places. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok where I'm fucking hysterical. <laughs> um at Land in Maine, L A N D I N and the state Maine. Mm-hmm. Um where you I'm just like I said, fucking hysterical. <laughs> so uh I haven't updated my Instagram in God knows how long, but I do frequently put things on TikTok. <laughs> yes, actually Landon's been pretty active on TikTok and she's got some really good ones. So I would recommend checking that out for sure. If you have that app, go give her a follow. <laughs> uh, and Karen, where can they find you? All right, so you can find me right here on this Twitch channel on Saturdays at noon where we have Interstage Window, which Landon co-hosts with me. It's always conversations about role play. Also on Thursdays, we do a stream called Artistic License, which is kind of like a whatever I want. Right now, we're playing Final Fantasy X, so if you would like to also attack and dethrone God with me, then join me on Thursday nights. We're not going to play it every Thursday, but a lot of Thursdays during 2021, we're going to play it. It's a Final Fantasy game, so it's really long, right? Like, even if you don't know that game, you know it's, like, long as hell, so (laughs) we're going to be playing that a lot. And um, then I have my YouTube show, which is called Spare Room, that goes up on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. on my YouTube channel all down below in the about and uh, that's scripted right so that's scripted role play help content so it's a it's a lot it's a lot like this show it's just like you know very scripted and structured instead of a conversation go ahead also spot me in next week's episode not next week um a couple more weeks in a couple more weeks but it is this month no no it is this month you were right uh we had last week a guest voiceover from our very own thumper so thank you so much thumper for adding your voice to the video and in a couple of weeks we've got a similar from landon i'll tell you all when that's coming up when it gets closer so you'll know 
Um, and then I also have a Twitter, which is at It's Karen Terry. It is mostly advertisements, but there are sometimes hot takes on there. So if that's your jam, go follow my Twitter. And I also have a TikTok, also at It's Karen Terry. Again, mostly advertisements, but on the weekends, I post actual TikToks that I made. That's so. Hysterical. <laughs> thank you so if you want to so check some out the pokemon one it's worth it guys <laughs> oh yeah yeah y'all really like that one um that one was a chore to make uh, i told you all about it when i made it so i won't repeat that but yes um that's my tiktok and uh, and it's very it's it's very like just kind of meme fun so if that's what you're into then that's what you'll find on there and uh and that's it that's all the places you can find me awesome sounds good all right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching today. And um, as always, don't forget to make it a great day. Don't, don't forget to be awesome. All right. Bye, y'all. See bye. you on Thursday.